People with so-called nine-to-five jobs actually have it pretty good. They're up at 6, 6.30, they shower, have breakfast, hit the road around 7.30, and depending on traffic, trains or buses, they usually arrive at work around 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock. It's pretty good. By 4 or 5 o'clock, they do the reverse. They get home just in time for the 6 o'clock news. So I imagine being a vet or a vet nurse working, you know, with cute and cuddly animals all day is a lot of fun and really, really easy. And here to uh, to tell me whether that's true or false is Dr. Anne Fawcett, who's uh, an avid blogger as well as being a great vet. G'day, Anne. G'day, Brian. How are you? Good. Is that true? Is it is it like just a breeze being a vet or a vet nurse working with animals? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh. I think that a lot of people have that idea and... Interestingly enough, when people apply for vet nursing jobs and vet jobs, they're quite often looking for a career change and they say they want to get out of the rat race and so on. <laughs> and I think veterinary practice is not quite the place to be if you, if you need a bit of an escape. Yes, I've, I've hung around a few over the years, including um, an emergency animal hospital, and it's just non-stop. I'm, I'm not allowed to go in and say, gee, it's quiet today because everyone looks at you no. and says, so, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, they're the words that you cannot say. <laughs> You just have to give someone a look. That's all you're allowed to do, a look, but you can't say, it's, you can't say the Q word because that, that's an invitation for a deluge. I have gathered, because I've seen it firsthand, it, it's actually a very stressful job in many ways and you just don't have any time for yourself. It is. And once you walk into the building, your time is not your own because um, even if you are in a clinic which runs by appointments, which many do, um, there's still walk-ins, there are still emergencies. And in between consultations, which might be fully booked, there are people who need you to give them information on the phone. There are specialists you might need to return calls to. There's all sorts of stuff going on. You might have planned your day and then suddenly uh, a 15-minute consultation turns into a three-hour surgery. And Everyone in the whole practice has to work around that. So once you enter the building, there's a real loss of control. Mm, <laughs> the mm. other thing is, though, it's not all cute, fluffy, happy, healthy kittens and puppies. Quite, quite often, it's very unwell animals and owners who are in a real emotional state because they're worried. And it is stressful because you, you're worried about the patient. You're worried about the owner. You want the best possible outcome. You don't want to miss anything. Yeah. You have to be performing at your absolute best. But it's really hard to sustain that for a very long time period and you might be consulting quite regularly I do consult for 10 hours in succession you know break and and that is hard work Mm -hmm. and and you've got to write up case notes you've got to write up the case notes and make sure everything's documented and everything's as comprehensive as possible and you might need to look up further information about management and so forth and you also need a bit of brain time to think about how you're going to manage a patient, whether you're a nurse or a vet, what needs to be done, how do you prioritise all of the tasks, and you have to keep reprioritizing and triaging through the day and yeah. night. You seem to have no time for yourself. How do you actually get time for yourself? How do you, how do you manage that? You have to prioritise it. And I think that one of the things working against that is a real culture in our profession, it's in medicine, it's in nursing, it's in lots of health professions, you know, the, the, the professional works themselves to the bone. And I think that's really dangerous mm. because I think at the end of the day, if you've got an exhausted professional who can't focus because they're hypoglycemic and they haven't gone to the toilet and they're yep. really busting for a week, it's really hard to give something your full attention and do the best job possible. So you have to protect some time and you have to make opportunities to look after yourself Make sure that you eat, make sure you go to the toilet and make sure that you get to recharge a little bit because if you don't, you you really do get the sense that you're running out of fuel and you can burn out. And I don't think we pay as a profession enough attention to that. Certainly, there's a bit more interest in the Australian Veterinary Association uh, promoting the well-being of vets and so forth, but I think at the level of vet practices, it's still not done as well as it could be. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time in front of a computer, which is, is uh, my fault and probably my excuse for not uh, doing more exercise. But I was reading recently where, you know, if you're going to work for an hour, work for an hour, take half an hour off. Work for an hour, take half an hour off. Well, I've got it down <laughs> to work for uh, an hour and a half and take 15 minutes off. And, and that's, I can, that's a great philosophy. It's just not possible in a veterinary setting. I know. <laughs> I did notice uh, in your article there's a link off to the dehydration urine colour chart. Um, tell me about that. That's fascinating. <laughs> well, uh If you have ever worked a day where you've been so involved in something, so it might be successive consultations or surgeries, or you might have just been sitting at the computer, Brian, for 10 hours without a break, (laughs) and, uh, and you haven't really had much to drink, 
and you haven't gone to the toilet, you'll find that the colour of your urine can change quite considerably and very dramatically. So people who become dehydrated during the day, and you can become clinically dehydrated during a, a, a tough day at work, um, will notice that the urine colour and concentration and even smell will change. And any health professional will tell you that, in fact, the reason that I wrote this blog post was in response to an article by a doctor saying, um, you know, probably one thing you didn't know about your doctor was they, they may only pee once a day. Yeah. And I think, well, if that's the case, we need to be addressing it because that's a healthcare issue and we're healthcare professionals. So if anyone should know best how to look after someone, it should be us. Well, you know what? It's very much like the uh, mechanic with the worst car, uh, the painter with yes. the, the, the unpainted <laughs> house in the street, the gardener yeah. with the worst garden. You know, it's the same, same thing, isn't it? And the vets and doctors with terrible urinary tracts. <laughs> we might all be on dialysis in 50 years' time if we don't properly look after ourselves. But well, yeah, I, and I guess I can see the reasoning. Well, it, not the reasoning, but I suppose the thinking behind it's like, if I have a drink now, then I'll have to go to the toilet, so I won't have a drink and yep. I'll be right. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're doing that for a day, that's fine. If you're doing it three or four days a week or five or seven days a week, that's unsustainable. Yeah. And you add to that the stress of not eating properly or um, when, when I posted this blog post as well, a lot of people got online and said, oh, yes, I just survive off the chocolates that come in the drug order. <laughs> that's fine for a day, but if you do that every day, that's really bad for your health. Yeah, yeah. Gee, well, I tell you what, um, I don't want to be a, a vet or a vet nurse now. Well, look, it's fabulous and it's got its moments, but we need to really prioritise our own health care as well and keep a check on it and review and be very aware that, we're not just looking after animals. We have to look after other human beings, including our colleagues, make sure that they have breaks, yep. make sure we cover them if they need to eat or have a moment or, or even have a cry because they're upset about a patient. That yeah. does happen. Yep. We need that space. But we also need to be aware we've got to look after ourselves as well because mm -hmm. if we don't do it, it comes across as a little hypocritical if we're telling someone the best way to look after their animal is take them for regular walks, let yes, them pee, yes. give them good food, and we're not doing it to ourselves. Yep. Yep, been there, done that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, well, look, what we need is a big banner that says more me time or put something in front of you, you know, it, it's it's me time o'clock, you know, something like that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I think, you know, at the end of the day, vets are animals too, aren't we? I mean, humans sure. are animals, and if we're going to look after animals, if you're really committed to looking after animals, you should be very good at your animal husbandry and you should be able to look after yourself too. That's how I see it. Words of wisdom from Dr. Anne Fawcett from smallanimaltalk.com. And thanks again for a very insightful blog post. Keep blogging. We love your blogs. And uh, keep chatting to us here on uh, Vet Talk. Thank you so much, Brian. <laughs>